All right, guys, welcome to another episode of How's It Made. Uh, today we have a rigid 12 volt hammer drill, and we're going to be uh, taking it apart, seeing how, how it's made, um, and how's it made, how good is it made. Also, seeing if there's any manufacturing inefficiencies or, or way that ways that parts could have been designed that would have saved saved the company some money and or and or made the made the product a better product for the consumer. So let's start. To, let's take it apart because these housings are going to be a, a lot easier to see separated. All right, so right off the bat, so there's, there's some uh, pretty unique assembly processes going on right here. You see this sheet metal piece right here? All that's doing is keeping the two halves of this housing kind of pinched together. It's not not really meant for strength. It's just see how the how the plastic just kind of bows out. You know, even even if I pinch it where the screw is, you can still see a little gap there that you know isn't there when you when you pinch it um, plastics just the way they are it's the nature of the beast they always warp a little bit and so unless you put screws like every quarter of an inch you're gonna have a little bit of warp so this is a really inexpensive way to improve the form and fit of these two housing parts that's pretty cool all right let's get this thing apart Oh, here's another. That's another cool little assembly feature. It's it's just a a little clip fit made out of plastic, and you can see how tiny it is. So it's not really meant to to take any stresses or or be a structural part. It's just meant to keep those two halves of the housing uh, as close together as they can for the quality look and feel of the product. That's probably something that you won't have and something you get from Harbor Freight or a lesser brand than uh, than Rigid. So that's that was the only thing holding it together after the screws. So all right, here we go. So let's set set that aside. We'll go. We'll get to that those parts in a minute. But these there's so much going on here. So all right, let's start start with the the overmolding process itself. So this is a hard plastic. Everywhere there's orange, there's an there's an orange skeleton basically of plastic. And then probably within the same tool, they do a secondary injection process of the rubber, the soft rubber grip. Um, and there's a couple reasons you would do that. One one is for cost. If you don't have to take the plat the orange part out of one mold and put it into another mold. That saves labor, saves time, saves you don't have to have two machines. You can do the same thing in one machine. Um, and an, another benefit of it is if you do it in the same mold, this rubber will actually be injected onto this plastic when it's still hot. So if you make the polymers similar, you can make them actually slightly uh, chemically combined because the plastic is so hot when the rubber gets injected on the top of it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and you can also see the dovetails. They didn't want to rely on just adhesion. So you can see I can, I can break that adhesion pretty, pretty easily. Let's see if you can see that. See, I just, I just separated that rubber from the, from the hard plastic skeleton, but those dovetails, are holding it on there and you can see the similar features throughout the entire part uh, little uh, strategic locations where they let the rubber come all the way through in order to kind of make a uh, a rivet style feature on the other side you know an undercut on the on the other side that's going to hold it on there so these parts can take a bunch of abuse without without those things coming off i don't know if you've you ever seen the the older versions of these and other brands um, and maybe older rigid ones too but the one of the first things that happen is these these grips start peeling off and you can see they've they've taken some strategic design action to to fix that and yeah here's three things in one piece 
plastic injection molded, rubber over molding, and metal over molded insert. You put strength where you need strength, and then you use cheap where you need cheap, and a little bit more expensive where you need nice, soft, comfortable texture. Pretty cool. All right. Um, you know, a number of uninteresting injection molded pieces went into this. You know, typical electrical uh, soldering and wiring. Uh, there's probably a PWM circuit in there, pulse width modulation that basically is like, acts like an accelerator uh, instead of an old, you know, resistor potentiometer circuit. I'm, I'm just guessing if they're, they've got high enough technology to have have a, uh, a lithium polymer cell, they probably have good enough technology to actually do a, a proper PWM circuit. Um, well, um, the electric motor here, uh, pretty typical construction you're going to see in any, any electric motor. Um, sheet metal, sheet metal housing, cooling fan, plastic injection molded ends. Um, and this actually seems like plastic, but it's not. So this is the business end of this drill. So it needs it needs metal uh, near the business end. A little bit of plastic right there that looks like just a coupler between the motor and the and the hammering mechanism. So let's get that apart. All right. So this is. One area, the magnets inside the motor. This is one area where you can instantly tell whether it's a Black and Decker, Harbor Freight, or a good brand like Rigid. This is metal. And older versions of these and cheaper versions of these, this is called a planetary gear set. And they might, some of them might make this one metal but they, they'll cheap out on the ones inside of here. And that will typically be the failure point of, uh, of a cheaper drill will be those gears right there. But it, this is probably a multi-stage uh, planetary reduction, so there might be, this is the, no, this should be the lowest torque one. So if they put plastic near the motor, then they probably, or put, put metal near the motor, they probably put metal in any later stages because this is the lowest stress end of the, of the gearbox. So you can just kind of see how that works. Uh, planetaries are pretty cool and how they work. That's the same idea that's inside an automatic transmission, you know, since forever. All right. Ooh, okay, we got a bunch of things going on. Okay, so it is a it is a dual stage. And yes, they did put metal in both stages. So and that's that's typically the case. If you've if you go to the effort of putting metal in the lower the on the first stage, which is the lower torque stage, you're probably going to put metal on the on the higher torque stage. That'd be silly to put plastic on the higher torque stage and not on the on the lower. Um, so there's the second stage. Um, let's see if I can. Yep, there it is. So there's stage one, stage two, and. There's the main shaft, and this is the hammering, hammering mechanism. So now this, this plastic housing is probably nylon because it has really high impact resistance. So this part doesn't really need to be strong. It just needs to resist shattering from the high impact uh, sent down that shaft to, to the housing. But these parts, they're probably made out of some pretty serious uh, hardened tempered steel um, if you if you try to try to hammer and put high impact on regular mild steel you're just going to deform it really quickly so that's uh, that's no doubt got a, a very specific temper that um, 
probably all the high-end manufacturers have a similar temple temper on their on their hammering parts but uh, but rigid probably keeps that pretty close to the vest even if it is the same as the waltz so this is very similar to a clutch dog that you'd see inside of a lower unit that lets you switch from reverse to and forward on a outboard marine engine very very similar design and probably very similar material properties needed in that so you can see the part that takes the brunt of it let's see can we get that off no so i'll just leave that out like that so there's a big big nylon bushing in there to kind of absorb some of that impact not send it back to the user um and i might have been i might have been wrong about this this No, that, that whole thing is plastic. Yeah, so there's some, that's gotta be a pretty pretty high impact plastic to be be down here at the business end of this drill, which plastics are advancing every day. It's amazing that what you can do with them and the, the strength and durability that you can get out of them now. But nowhere near what these two pieces of steel can do. Uh, spring shaft that's probably a mild steel shaft because that shaft doesn't really need to need to take any brunt of any any impact although whatever the coupler is in there that probably has to be pretty hard so not that looks like a uh, just a plain bearing i don't think there's any ball bearings in there just a plain looks like a, a high high iron bronze bronze bushing surrounding that coupler right there um, with as low rpm oh there we go yeah let's see so is that yeah so that's that's not a bearing that's a that's a plain plain bushing and they got a flat built into it to make sure that it doesn't spin this spins inside of it so yeah this is a oh. yeah so there's a and nut a sub housing injection molded housing and this is either pressed into it or it could possibly be over molded uh, into it it's, it's a pretty tight fit so it could be could be either or normally but it's real common for bushings and threaded threaded inserts to be molded into plastics uh, to just secure them so they don't have to be assembled in a secondary process so It's pretty pretty strong spring in there. Ooh. All right, well that about wraps up uh, the rigid drill. Can't really find anything, any real inefficiencies or design flaws. R you know, like I said, rigid and. and impact drills in general have been really really put through the the hard design cycles over the years because of the the applications that they're used in and the and the people who use them uh, use them pretty hard so if if they if any company that's made it to this point uh, and is considered a reputable brand is probably uh, not going to have um, many many design flaws that uh, Especially not that you could see just just from looking at it from the outside. You know, maybe if I do an X-ray of this, I could see imperfections in it. But you know, rigid has made it a pretty pretty long way. So uh, I would I would hazard a guess that all this stuff is uh, is in pretty good shape and will be for a lot long time to come. So, all right. Well, thanks guys for watching, and uh, see you next time.